Alrighty. Can people hear me? Is everybody, uh, is everything coming through loud and clear? I'm trying something different here. Um, I'm streaming from my laptop uh, and then doing some like overlays and stuff. We'll see how it all pans out. Cool, cool. Okay, so we've got a few people in here already. Um, Tiago Jernej uh, from Slovenia, uh, Vince, Christian, Mini Dan, Faber, Jack, Edgars. Man, we got a lot of people in here. Uh, welcome, welcome to the stream. Um, so, uh, this is supposed to be just a live Q and A. Um, you know, so if you guys have questions about your mini, um, ask them. If you have questions about the channel, me, whatever, I'm here to answer them for a little while. Um, everything is normally, the way I've streamed these in the past is I have had it set up on my phone and then I'll bring my phone around and I'll show you guys all sorts of different stuff. Um, but in this case, what I'm gonna be doing is I will have my laptop here um, set up so I can see you guys, I can type responses if I need to. Um, <clears throat> and then I have a camera set up outside. It's super sunny out, um, so it's really hard to like expose the, the mini properly. But um, that should, uh, should kind of give you guys a rundown. What's going on with everybody here? Hey Paul, thanks for joining the stream. Oh, I forgot where I put my coffee. Oh, it's still morning here, um, and this is my day off, so I haven't really been, um, haven't been rushing around. You know, I've been kind of getting the stuff when I when I get to it. No questions from all seventeen people who are viewing it right now. I have I find that hard to believe. Jack says it's 2.55 in England. Yeah, I was trying to time this so that um, so that it could be kind of like the afternoon there. Uh, I usually have a lot of a lot of people join from, from the UK in general. Um, so. <clears throat> so while we wait for some more people to get in here and uh, start asking some questions. Um, hey, Mini Dan from Malta. Uh, I have done a few things on the mini. Um, I've got some stuff filmed. I don't. I need to get get stuff ordered or get stuff. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I have to get some parts for things. So I'm kind of in this like weird, um, weird in between state. Um, but like the Super Nine Nine Eight is right here. Uh, that is like just wrapped up. I'm still ordering ordering uh, ordering parts for that. And then I've got my HIF 44 right behind me here. So I was gonna put this on my car, um, but I am not super into um, how tight it is in my engine bay. Um, I had to do a lot of like engine tilting and engine modification um, in order to get it to even fit at all. So I'm not too keen on that really. Um, so that is now for sale on eBay. Um, you can pick that up if you want it. Uh, it's my eBay's classic mini DIY. Um, I just listed that, and then uh, and then I'm probably gonna I'm gonna try out an HS6. Um, I've had some feedback specifically from somebody in here, Paul, who's like not super into the HS6, which is uh, which I I actually I really trust his judgment on some of these things. He's uh, he's he's a great knowledge base in terms of, of carburetors and things, but. Um, I still kind of want to give it a try. Um, I've had dual HS2s on my car. I've had the HIF44. Um, I actually had a video of putting that on a long time ago um, and ultimately gave that one away. And so uh, I think I want to try the HS6, see what it's like. It'll fit better in my engine bay with the Mark I body and all that. So Mini Tom says, sorry, press some weird buttons just then. Oh, I see. I'll show that comment. There we go. It held it for review, uh, Mini Tom. Uh, I'm wondering if uh, it doesn't like you. 
looks like YouTube doesn't doesn't like your uh, your your contribution there. All right. Not a single question from you guys. What's going on here? Kevin Shale says, hey, Cole. Derek says, good morning, Cole from Pennsylvania. Looking forward to CMU 60. Yes, I am really looking forward to CMU 60. Um, I really hope that there are no problems with my car until then. I'm so ready to drive this thing. Um, one of the biggest things I've been like trying to get back into um, is I, 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 well, driving my car. Um, that's a given. Um, but I really want to do some like mini videos. I have one that I really like to do a submission for the International Mini Film Festival um, for IMM and then for CMU. And then uh, I have some other things in, in the works. Uh, I keep pointing off this direction, that direction over there because the car is over there. You can see it in the little little thumbnail in the bottom right corner. Mini Dan says, going to go wash my mini soon. Uh, is it nice weather over there? Um, my mini could use a wash too. I might do that today. Uh, Paul Jeffrey says, how are you finding the 001 camshaft, Cole? So I really, really liked it um, for the time that I was driving my mini. Um, and before I took those HS2s off of it, I was really pleased with it. The It just felt good all around. Um, one thing I didn't like about the last cam I have, which is right up there the last cam I had was uh, it, it was really good at the top end but it was just garbage anywhere below it and I just <clears throat> I'm not I'm not flat out in my car most of the time most of the time I'm in traffic and I just kind of want to punch it a little bit to get around somebody so yeah so in short Paul I really like it so far um, Jack Thomas says uh, have you ever owned a Clubman estate um, I haven't. Um, I, uh, I would like to. Um, in terms of priority though, if I was to pick another Mini up, I think I said this in what, my last video about the Super 998 that finished up. If you haven't seen that, you should go check it out. It's probably one of my favorite videos that I've made. Um, I'd get a pickup Mini. Um, I really, really would love a Mini pickup. Um, and then after that, it would probably be It'd probably be a Clubman after that, and then maybe like an estate or a panel van like uh, Alex Tune has. Um, Mini Dan says, yeah, it's nice and sunny here. It's just got some garage dust on it. It'll it, it, uh, I'll throw the cover off it once it's all dried. Um, yeah, I so funny stuff. I, I have a car cover from a Mini that I've been putting on it recently, and I took off the car cover to do some work, and the literal day that I took the car cover off, I completely forgot we were getting brickwork done in the back of the house, and so they uh, were cutting all this brick, and now there's all this brick dust on my car, so you need to be really careful when I clean it. I need to pressure wash the hell out of it before I, uh, you know, go wiping it down and everything. Kevin Shell says, what's your thoughts on the seven port alloy head thinking of possible changing? Um, so I have a few things I, I'd love to tell you about that. The, uh, the seven port head is badass. I mean, it's cool. It is really cool. Um, I've seen some with Weber's on the front. I've seen some with fuel injection on the front. I don't know which one you're thinking about. Um, but I will tell you that no matter what they say, no matter what description you read, mini parts on the classic mini are never directly bolt on. There's always something you have to do. Guarantee it. Even if it's little stuff, it pops up, and it's not the end of the world. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to steer you away from this. Um, but I, my next build, I'd really like to do a cross-flow head. Um, I, uh, I need to save up the money for it. It's very expensive. But, um, but I'd really like to do a cross-flow head, 7-port or maybe even like a, the BMW bike, and, uh, bike cylinder heads that can mount directly to the Mini. Um, that would be cool, too. Um, Kevin says, Genve throttle bodies. I don't know what those are. Uh, I've not seen those. Oh, man. So as far as a streaming time goes, are you guys, uh, are you guys good with this time? I've been trying to, I've been bouncing around different times. And granted, you know, I do have a day job. I happen to be off today because of Good Friday. Um, so thank you, Catholic people. And uh, um, I've been trying to find a good time for these live streams. You know, sometimes it's like, oh, well, 
here's the people in the UK can get it, but people in Australia can't, or, um, you know, it's, it's a tough one. Uh, Dinon says, just bought an aftermarket open pod air filter for my SPI, but it doesn't have the space underneath to fit the air temp sensor. Can you help? Um, so the air temp sensor that's going um that goes like towards the bottom of the throttle body, is that right? Um, so the SPI is, uh, I mean, if you can't fit it in there, can you modify the, the actual filter at all to, to fit that in there? Uh, Mini Dan says, what's your job? Only if you want. Um, I am a web developer um, for a bank here in the US. Uh, I make a web applications for investing. So like buying stock, selling stock, options, things like that. Um, I build that software. And uh, for those of you who might have just joined, the, uh, the thumbnail that's right here that is a live stream right out into the garage. Um, I just plugged up another webcam and tossed that on there. Um, so uh, if you have any questions about what the engine looks like right now or uh, anything in there, you know, feel free to ask that. Uh, Mini Dan says, cool job. Yeah, it's, it's fun. A lot of the times it's really fun. It can be a little stressful sometimes, but, um, but at the end of the day, you know, you're making something that's, that's pretty cool. Hmm. This coffee is so good today. I don't know what it is. It might be just because I'm off today that the coffee just tastes better. Um, Zach Peterson says, take it the HIF 44 didn't last too long installed. So, um, I, yeah, no, it didn't. Um, yeah, can you tell? Here, let me just grab this. We'll talk about it. Ugh. So, HIF 44, basically a modernized version of the HS6. So it's a one and three quarters inlet here. Um, so lots of air, pretty cool throttle body here. Let me just go ahead and uh, actuate that. There you go. I put this on. Um, it was super tight in that space and uh, specifically my Mark I. Um, it's not like that in every every car, but, um, but what it is about it is that this right here, this whole unit on the bottom is the, uh, is the um, float bolt. So it sits underneath the carburetor as opposed to on the side. Um, I'm going to be going with an HS6 because of my Mark 1 body. Um, so I'm going to take this. Uh, I'm, this is on eBay. I'm going to sell this. And then we're going to move to the HS6, which should be a little bit more period specific and fit in that space better, even though the HS6 was never on there uh, to begin with. But if you want this, it's for sale on eBay. Classic mini DIY. All right. Um, Avenger says, what's up with the Mark 1 you showed recently? So that Mark 1 body shell is, I'm assuming, what you're asking about. Um, that is still for sale. Uh, the guy who owns it, who bought it, uh, bought it, we cleaned it out. We're going to resell it. Um, he, uh, he's working on, he has the actual title for it, but it was seized from a mechanic. So he's got to kind of iron out all of the uh, legal stuff with the title so that it's easier to sell here in the U.S. But it is still available um, and, uh, and if you guys are interested in that, you know, you email me at classicminidiy at gmail.com. Um, that, uh, and I can give you some more details about it. Um, my mini, Jack Thomas, is a 1960. The body shell is 1960. The engine you see in the thumbnail over here, over here, there, this is hard, over here. That engine is a 1293 out of an Austin America um, after some work's done, been done to it by me. Um, uh, Jernish says, what's up with the 997 engine that you started to rebuild? Um, let me just uh, rotate this a little bit. Hopefully we can see that. This right here is that, that engine. Whoops. All right, let me open this up so you can see. Um, So, as you can see, no progress whatsoever. This is my microphone. Let me just move that back. Okay. Um, yeah, so not really any progress done on this right now. Um, I had to order a bunch of parts and a lot of the parts that I'm getting, so I wanted to get ARP uh, studs for this. So um, head studs, main cap bolts, all that stuff I wanted to be ARP, um, which 7 Mini Parts is uh, helping me get, so um, thank you to them. But 
They are all special order items because most people don't get ARP studs for, um, for a small displacement engine like this. So, um, waiting on parts right now. Once all of those get in, I should be able to build out the top end pretty much completely. And then, uh, and then I've got a remote gearbox. I've got to go through all the parts in that. I haven't yet. And, uh, and figure out what I have, what I need, etc., etc. All right. You can actually see. God, how do I do this? You can actually see right over here. That is the head for the super or for the uh, early nine nine eight. Um, Mini Tom says, "Do you think Leeds will beat Wig Wigan today? Is that how you say that? Um, Wigan, Wigan. Um, I have no idea what that means." I'm assuming it's soccer, uh, oh, football, sorry. Um, and uh, I don't know, who are you rooting for? Whoever that is is gonna win. Paul says, I had a look at the look for the HS6 call. I can't find it. It may be in my other shed. I'll have a look later. I'm sure I never threw it away. Um, Paul, uh, that if you can find it, that would be super helpful. Um, I did end up buying a pre-rebuilt one um, just because I'm really ready to get my car back on the road. So I'm just going to slap that sucker on and make sure it works. Um, but uh, um, if you have that HS6, I will pay for shipping because um, I'd love to rebuild one on the channel. Um, so anyone who's watching, if you have an HS6 too, um, no, just an HS6 also, um, and, uh, and you'd be willing to donate it for a rebuild, um, I'll pay for shipping. And uh, if you want it back, I'll send it back to you rebuilt as long as you just give me a little while to actually do the rebuild. Oh. Where'd my coffee go? Oh, mm -hmm. it's right there. Mini Tom says, not the pie eaters leads to win. Well, leads it is then. See, I was, I was rooting for leads the whole time. One other thing I did, and uh, you can't, you can kind of see it in the in the external video pointing at the mini, um, right up in the corners of the actual um, of the actual video feed in, in the uh, the engine bay, you see some like slanted um, metal plates. So unfortunately, the uh, welds on my wonderfully made uh, hood that I bought as a replacement could not handle the extended use of the vertical hinge lift uh, hinges that I got from Innovation. So um, I took those off and, uh, and I had some choices. I was like, well, am I gonna fix the weld and repaint the hood? Because it, when I weld it, it would naturally need to be repainted. Would I uh, replace the hood, repaint a new one, put that back on, or would I simply put hood pins in? And I put hood pins in, uh, spoiler alert. That's one of the videos I'm hoping to get edited here relatively soon. Um, but you can see those plates. Uh, one of my viewers sent those to me and uh, they work really, really well. Um, me, Tom says, have you considered buying the Mark I and restoring it yourself? It's too big of a project for me um, right now. Uh, I, all I have is a carport. There's too many kind of plates that I'm juggling right now, and I just know that I wouldn't do it justice. Um, I'd be into doing a mini engine build. Um, I really like building engines. Um, and then maybe I'll find a shell, something that's uh, a little rougher that I can tidy up and then put a really nice, fast motor into. Um, Jack Thomas says, what's the black box on the shelf? This one right here, that black box, is that the one you're talking about? That black box is a code reader for a modern car. Um, Jernish, bleh, Jernish says, will you sell that 997 engine? Yes, that's the plan. So um, my goal with that is to do a full period restore. So I did have to board a little bit because the um, cylinders were uh, real rough and they needed some work. Um, but yeah, let me pull out some of the replacement parts. So, um, it had D top pistons in it, which are the ones with the little step on it. And, uh, I'm replacing it with just simple flat top pistons with a plus 20 on them. Um, so that engine is going to get fully rebuilt. 
and then I'm going to uh, mate it with a remote gearbox, a kind of a period gearbox. It's going to be four synchro instead of three synchro because the three synchro one was uh, was toast, unfortunately. And uh, and then I'll spray paint the whole thing green like it was out of the factory, and then that will be for sale to anyone who wants it. I mean, I'll ship it. Um, uh, granted, they'll have to pay for shipping, especially if you want to send it somewhere overseas. But um, but yeah. And then I'm hoping that funds more projects on the on the channel, so I can show you guys more stuff, more new stuff. Um, Zach Peterson says I'm removing the 998 auto to install a 1275 manual that I'm rebuilding. Um, any tips on doing this conversion? Um, well, so if you're just replace if you're replacing the whole engine, there's really not much to it. Um, I mean, put that in air quotes. I mean, granted, you're doing a engine swap, so. It's not like it's just like boop boop, you know. But um, in terms of tips on the conversion, uh, when you're building the 1275, try and do as much stuff outside of the engine bay as you can. Um, it's you're just going to be thanking yourself. It's much easier to work on the car outside of the, or much easier to work on the engine outside of the engine bay. Um, but yeah, uh, the shouldn't be too much different. The subframes are the same. Um, the hole for the gear shift, I think, is the same. If anyone has any details on that, post that in the live chat. That would uh, that would be great. And uh, and yeah, no, that's uh, that's that's about all I have for you on that one. So I was gonna give away these Minovation hinges, um, but uh, and and. Alex Toon sounded like he was interested, but I don't know. Is he on this on this live stream? If you don't want those, I'll send them to somebody else. Hmm. Now, uh, you probably see in this corner here um, that uh, it, they like the answers I'm giving. Um, consider dropping a buck or two in the super chat to help support new projects. Um, if you guys like the question or like the answers I'm giving to your questions, um, or you just like the channel, want to toss a couple bucks here, um, the super chat is a great way to do that. It does really help me out with the channel. Um, the uh, these projects they, they get expensive. Um, the super nine or this early nine nine eight just for the parts that I've ordered so far are almost a thousand dollars. Um, and so hopefully I can sell it and make some of that back, but, um, anything you guys can do to help would be definitely appreciated. Um, many Tom says, Toonie doesn't want them, send them to Leeds. Hey man, first come first serve. If you want them, email me your address. I think I've already got your email. Minisaurus, what time is it with you? Um, it is 10 o'clock, 10 17 in the AM. See? Sun's a shining, Minnie's out, a bacon. It's gonna be a nice day. So I keep getting this notice from YouTube that's saying my video output's a little too low. Can you guys see me okay? I'm assuming uh, you can. I haven't gotten any bad feedback, um, but video looks okay, audio sounds okay, question mark. Mean Tom says I'm messing, but if Tuni doesn't want him, then yeah, I might. We'll get him on the live chat and let's let's ask him right now. Jerry says I'm interested in the 997, but I don't need the gearbox. So hmm hmm. Send me an email, classicminidiy at gmail .com. Um, Let's talk about this. I might be willing to separate that gearbox off of it. Um, since it's not the original gearbox, but uh, um, I already have all the parts to rebuild it, and I'd really like to do that on the channel, so um, I'd probably only be willing to sell it already top-end assembled. Derek says, hasn't had any issues with the feed. Awesome. Um, Lee Muller says, is it Muller or M Mueller? I don't, the, the two dots, I don't remember how, how you're supposed to pronounce that. What would you recommend as a first stage performance mod for a 1098? Um, what carburetor do you have on it already? That's a good first question to figure out what to tell you. We 
Lee says a standard HS4. Okay, stage one kit. Yeah, many sources uh, is right. It's probably a good place to start. Um, so the HS4, so anything bigger than an HS4 on, on that displacement engine, you're gonna start getting negligible returns. Um, this, uh, maybe like a HIF 30, 38, 33, can't remember that number. Um, might be good. It's a modernized version of the HS4. It's the same size. Um, if you want to replace the carb, if you want to stick with the same carb, you can do things like uh, a new exhaust system, um, a stage one, a stage two mana flow system. Those are great. Um, they're, uh, they're basically just the pipes that go from the top of your cylinder head. So um, this little dude, this little buddy right here, backside of that down to the bottom end of the car. The whole rest of the exhaust would be the same. Um, but the, uh, but the, um, oh, lost my train of thought, but the headers would be different, more flow, presumably more, uh, more power. Um, and then, uh, past that you really need to start modifying the head. Um, I think, uh, if you want more flow, you have to add more flow. So. Um, and then you get into like the crazy shit, which like pulling the engine out and boring it. But on a 1098, you don't have a lot of room to bore past there. So just keep that in mind. Um, Zach Peterson says, awesome job. Always, well, uh, always come to the channel for tips and tricks working on my mini. Zach, thank you for the uh, super chat donation. Really appreciate it. And uh, I'm glad you find the channel valuable. I mean, Tom says, Cole, Leeds, ha Leeds has scored one to zero. You're welcome, Mini Tom. It is because I am rooting from, for them all the way over here in the United States. Um, Mini Soros says, high lift cam. Yep, um, but if you're doing a cam, then you're also already have the engine out, presumably. It's pretty hard to do a cam, um, cam replacement with the engine in. Um, so at that point, you might be thinking different kind of pistons, update that crankshaft, but then you still get into the hole. You're still limited by the head and how much air can actually get into the engine. Corey says, uh, hi Cole, in regards to my wiring issues, do you think it would be better to run a whole new wiring loom instead of trying to trace the spaghetti mess the previous owner has left me? Ooh, that's a tough one, man. Um, it depends on how many issues you keep running into. Um, and it also kind of depends on the state of the actual, um, the rest of the wires. So if things are starting to fray already, um, I will put it this way. Mark one, my, my car, when I got it was really, really ratty. Um, the wiring harness was, was salvageable, probably usable, but I ended up just buying a new one. Um, because I then had a wiring diagram that I knew was 100% correct. Um, I could run all the wires. Everything was solid. I knew it was working. Um, so, you know, what's the value you put on peace of mind, if you get my meaning? All right. What else you guys got for me? I grab something. I forgot what I was going to do. <laughs> so I'll take a quick uh, viewer poll right now. Um, I've been tossing around different engine ideas for the, uh, the better part of two months now. Um, and, uh, I, I, not necessarily to replace my engine in my car. I think I would, would, unless that thing has a catastrophic failure, um, or I have some balls to the wall engine that I, um, can put in it. I really, really don't want to take that out again. Um, there's a running joke with, uh, some of the other mini YouTubers that, uh, that I've taken my engine out, um, uh, too many times. Uh, I'll just put it that way. And, uh. <laughs> I would agree with you guys. I have taken it out too many times, but what I was getting at with this question is, from a viewer's perspective, would you rather see me do a supercharged build, turbocharged build, 
a um, a cross flow head, um, so relatively standard bottom end, but with a seven port head, a, uh, a K series BMW. Um, uh, thanks for joining, um, Siri. Great. Um, if I or a K series BMW motorbike head, um, which would give me that cross flow, but also the dual overhead cam. What would you guys like to see? Corey says, makes sense so far, only issue is the signal. So I might just like stick with those, the, with the, with the, with the new, or sorry, with the old wiring harness. If you start running into a lot of issues though, probably would, would swap. Minisaurus, uh, if you're re responding to, um, to Corey about the, his electrical issues, he's just missing a wire for the, uh, for the turn signal on the right side, um, or he's missing it for the driving lights. I forget, it's just only two wires over there. So, we've got one for the seven port, one for the K-series head, 16 valve conversion, ask Matt Green, so that's two for the K-series head, uh, one for the supercharged, this is gonna get really confusing, um, K-series, and then a turbo. Can Siri really wants to be part of this uh, this chat. I'm just gonna move her away. Go away. Oh dang it! I lost count. I put my hands down. Okay, so I'm getting K series head is kind of the the biggest biggest one so far. Um, then on top of that, on top of a K series, should it be fuel injected or should it be uh, not um, not at carbureted? So Weber's on the front. Can you do that? I don't know, actually, now that I said that out loud. Might have to be fuel injected. We'll see. I'd love to do something like this, or at least start a, a bigger, kind of more rowdy engine build um, for my 30th birthday. For those of you who don't know, it is in May. Um, I am going to be 30 years old. 30 years young. I don't know. Depends on how you look at it. Mini Tom says, how about a turboed K-series build? That would be awesome. That would be awesome. I agree with that. Although you do start to run into some uh, space issues inside the, <laughs> the engine bay there. Um, I'm wondering if, uh, uh, I'm wondering if we could do a supercharged K-series build because then you don't need an intercooler. Maybe you can, uh, you can fit a little bit more more into that i don't know um derek levin thank you for the uh for the donation and he asks uh your favorite internet forum sites for research and sharing information about classics other than youtube obviously um you and mod mini rock thank you for the kind words and my favorite forums um so i will say there is a smaller forum that i'm a big fan of um restorationmini.com.org i forget what the, the full website is but it's restoration mini and they're really cool everybody there is really friendly um no one's out there just dick measuring everyone's really supportive of all sorts of different projects like there's a vtech build on there right now there's uh um you know just period specific builds those are really cool um the mini forum's always been really good. Um, and recently I have been using Facebook a good bit to uh, Facebook groups to ask questions, although um, those have been great for the information you get, but you also have to kind of sift through kind of shitty people sometimes. I mean, you do get a, a lot of people that are just telling you completely incorrect information um, or kind of rude and, uh, and, you know, what have you. But there's still really good information on those Facebook groups, and generally those people will get in there and uh, and and the the good people will get in there and kind of help correct that. So that's nice. Zach Peterson says supercharged would be a plug and play would be plug and play to an extent, not really needing to add an ECU to control th uh, fuel injection. Yeah, um, the only drawback with supercharging or any sort of uh, forced induction is that you end up you really need to do some bottom end work um, to decompress your engine. Um, so uh, 
and I'm sure you probably know that if you uh, know that it's relatively plug and play. Um, the uh, and you know you could do a decompression plate, but it's kind of a, uh, rather just get some dished pistons, like really dished, so you can decompress it. Um, Paul, thank you for the donation. That's uh, really kind of you. I really appreciate that. Um, for those of you who don't know, Paul Jeffries uh, his really, really, um, really, really, uh, what, completely lost my train of thought. Um, really, really knowledgeable. He's on the Facebook groups a lot. Um, he'll tell you how it is. He tells you he wants to help, and he seems to always want to help everybody, um, which is a blessing and a curse. Uh, he does engine builds. So if you guys are in the UK and you are looking for a really well-made engine, um, something that is going to work, something that is going to be reliable, check out Paul. He is top, top guy. Minisaur says, what about a Metro Turbo engine? Um, I'd be down with that, but I, they never sold those here, so I'd have to import the engine. Um, I'd have to import all that over here, which would probably be a, a pretty penny. Corey says, I think my supercharged engine just has a spacer between the head and the block to decompress it. So, yeah, so there's there's a, there's the, the decompression plate option. Um, you know, I think that... Uh, if it's done correctly, if you take your time and do it right, um, you can probably do that. Uh, the quote, um, what people would call the right way is definitely bottom end out um, and replace the pistons uh, or board over um, to decompress those cylinders to make sure that you know when you add that forced induction, you aren't adding too much boost and your engine doesn't explode. Gaudi Performance says, hello, what is your location? I am in North Carolina in the United States of America. What else you guys got for me? Mini Tom, Paul's 1310 straight cut video this morning sounded amazing. Love that noise. Yeah, you should check out the rest of his channel. He's got some really, really cool sounding engines. Um, and from what I understand, it, that car is, uh, it rips. It's fast. Um, Corey says, it is a 1380. Not sure what the pistons are as I didn't build it. Yeah. So, well, if you have a decompression plate, they're probably standard pistons. Um, so the decompression plate adds that additional bit of space. Obviously, it's not that much, but it adds more space inside those cylinders to decompress it instead of, say, with you, when you have a flat top piston like this and you add a dish to it, um, you're adding more space inside the combustion chamber and that's when you lose compression, um, which is ideal for a, uh, for a forced inju induction engine. For naturally aspirated one, loss of compression means loss of power. Andres says, hello from Mexico. Do you recommend to upgrade Roller Rocker 1.3 or 1.5? Can I get better, uh, can I get better performance? Um, I, uh, hmm. So the thing about Roller Rockers is like, it, they really need to be added with a camshaft. Like you can get, you can kind of fudge your lift with those, um, but they work best when you add them to a car that has some sort of performance camshaft. Um, so uh, I would probably, if it's a road going car, regular, you know, like daily driver, I'd probably go with a 1.3 if you want to upgrade them. Um, Derek says, thoughts on Lancaster barbecue in Mooresville? Uh, top barbecue. It's awesome. Um, I used to live up in, uh, in Huntersville and I used to go there a lot. That was a, uh, that was really good barbecue. That's one thing. North Carolina just does it right with barbecue. I haven't had barbecue better than North Carolina. Damn. I don't know what you what it's like over in uh, in the various different countries of the people who are watching, but Charlotte is one of the worst places I've ever been in terms of pollen. Um, and I have terrible seasonal, seasonal allergies. Um, and, uh, is it like super pollen-y everywhere uh, you guys are at? Or is it just, uh, is it just, just Charlotte? We're just suffering over here in a, in a sea of yellow snow. Zach Peterson says, should come out to Texas. I am always willing 
to try new food. I love food. So um, I would love to be proven wrong with even better barbecue from Texas. Uh, I had, I don't remember the last time I've been out to Texas. We went to, I think we stopped in Austin on our way to Phoenix, Arizona. Um, Paul Jeffries with some great advice here about those roller rockers. Um, he says uh, they need to be set up correctly, otherwise you'll lunch the cam and the followers, uh, which is true. You will, you can really screw up the followers. Um, let me see if I have those. I can actually show you guys what he's talking about. Well, I don't have those old followers. I threw them away, but. Grab one of my spare cams. Zach Peterson says we have to deal with mountain cedar pollen here. I've not heard of that. It sounds like, based on the way you're saying that it's awful. Um, Minnesota says, me, uh, the rapeseed is the worst. Um, and then Corey says, it's fairly seasonal here with pollen. The last of the snow just melted yesterday. That's awesome. Mark Price says, hi, mate. How, how's tricks? Uh, I, I'm not sure what that means. Um, so what Paul is talking about here is when your camshaft is rotating, you can see this, this right here is one of your lobes. And when it rotates, it lifts one of the lifters up and then, uh, and then opens and closes your valves. Now, what happens is, is if you have too much of a, too high of a lift on your, uh, on your rocker assembly, what can happen is you're putting undue amounts of strain on the cam followers that sit on top of these, your lifters and your camshafts. So um, over time, it'll just chew the metal to pieces on these camshafts. So um, great, great tip, Paul. Um, but yeah, something to keep in mind. I can't, Corey, I can't believe that it's still snowing up there. Although I do remember, I went to Barrie, Ontario, um, which is basically directly north of me in Canada. Uh, it was about a 17 hour drive from, from Charlotte. And uh, that's where I bought my mini. And it was right after my birthday, so mid-May. And I uh, drove up there with my dad to pick up the mini. And I kid you not, mid-May there was still snow on the ground um just blew blew my mind I, I don't think I could live somewhere with that much snow it's too much for me although I do like the cold I just I want to visit I have a question for you guys while I'm holding this these rags are garbage do you guys have any recommendations for good shop rags that I can reuse? I've been tr really trying to start reusing shop rags. Um, I have this cool laundry bag that um, they come pick up once a week if I go through that many, and they'll wash it and bring it back. And so I never, I never really run out, but these are just garbage. They don't absorb anything. Um, if you have any good recommendations, post them in the chat. Corey says, yeah, Barry's about an hour and a half northwest of me. Okay, so you're you're more towards the you're towards the east coast near Buffalo. Is that right? Mark Price says that's why you need to cho change your oil regularly. Yes, yeah, so um, even if you change your oil regularly though, um, with a really, really hot camshaft, you still run the risk of damaging those lifters and things. Um, that's but it's it, that's a very very true statement minis are one of those the engines and minis are one of the ones that like it's super crucial that you change your oil regularly if you don't you're just gonna you, you're gonna eat your motor up paul says i use microfiber with microfiber cloths they are great yeah that's probably really good because then they don't leave any sort of uh um any sort of like fiber on the stuff you're wiping off i should just get like a big bag of those and start using those 
It's a good idea. Oh, man. I'm looking behind me to see if I've got anything that's, you know, really cool that's going on um, right now with the with the mini channel, but things are kind of like in an in-between state right now, if you get my meaning. Alexander Nelson says, hi, for, uh, from up the coast in Williamsburg, Virginia. I have a leaded head. Any recommendations on a lead additive? Um, I usually just use a fluid and um, I don't need it on my car anymore, but... Um, the lead additives I use really is just whatever is at AutoZone when I need to fill up my engine. Um, that's, or when I need to fill up my car, not my engine. Um, so I'm not fussy about it. Corey says I got a mi bunch of microfiber towels from, uh, from microfiber cloths from Amazon. Yep. Derek says used cloths. All my shop rags are old clothes that have gone from normal clothes to shop clothes to shop rags. Huh. Do you like cut them up and stuff to make them like rag shaped I'm gonna see if I can get some of these other uh, mini youtubers up in here Mini Tom's already in here. Appreciate the support. If you guys haven't seen Mini Tom's channel, ooh, excuse me, it's been a little bit since he's posted a video, but he has really, really good advice um, in terms of welding and uh, doing body work and that of that nature. Um, and uh, he's been working on a mini. Definitely recommend checking out that channel. Um, it's great stuff. Derek says, uh, depends on the need. Cotton-based stuff is the best. Undershirts, boxers, t-shirts, etc. So Alexander Nelson says, radiator fluid for uh, a recommendation for a two core radiator. Um, they're all gonna be really about the same, um, you know. So I, I, up in Williamsburg, it's a little bit cooler than Charlotte. It's not much though, is it? I mean, during the summer, you guys still get up into the 90s Fahrenheit. Um, what I did, so right now, since, I now use a waterless coolant by Evans. Um, and, uh, and I ended up, sw I ended up switching from a standard coolant. Um, so far it's been good. I haven't really had it, uh, running for a whole summer, so I don't know how it deals with like really, really hot summer days. So that's still TB deter uh, <laughs> TB determined. Uh, I guess that's right. Um, but in terms of heavy heat, uh, maximum cooling water is a better heat transfer than antifreeze. So when you go to the store and you see the jugs that say pre-diluted 50-50, that's gonna give you the maximum amount of freeze protection to cooling potential. Um, but as you move into the heavy summer where you know it's not gonna freeze, um, I do think, I used to do um, more water. So less antifreeze, more water, um, which ends up with a higher cooling potential and helping to keep your car cool. Um, Mark Price says, Wins is the best lead substitute I find. There you go. Keith Miller, thank you for joining. Good to have you here. I guess my text message worked. <laughs> Keith also has a really cool channel. Um, he's going through a, a rebuild himself. Um, great content. It's to the point, which I really like. He just gets in there and does the work, which is sweet. Um, it, it has a very B is for build uh vibe to it which is cool alexander nelson says uh cool haynes says 30 to 50 also yep so pretty much about what i did i did it by eye though um i mean i i didn't i didn't fuss about it too much i just kind of was like mm, it's full now there's more water in it oh full again more water you know that kind of thing Alrighty, 
So I'll probably be wrapping this up here in just a little bit, um, probably about seven more minutes. I'm going to cap it out right at seven or eight more minutes. I'm going to cap it out right at an hour long. Um, if you guys have any other questions, uh, now is the time to ask them. Um, Zach Peterson says, here in Texas, I run 50-50, but I'm using a heater matrix from a 67 Mustang as a secondary front mount rad. That's a great idea. Um, I, have, uh, I have a heater core that I found at AutoZone, super cheap, nothing fancy. And I literally, in the summer previously, I would zip tie it to the front grill on the inside. You don't see it on the outside. Ran the, the lines to it and boom, secondary, secondary radiator. And, uh, and it worked pretty well. Uh, I would recommend that. Um, oh, and he also says he has an electric fan. Um, so that's even better. You can also mount an electric fan on the inside of the fender well, um, you know, inside the uh, actual body of your mini. That works really well too. And then you just add a little switch and when it's hot, you'll be like, click, and the fan comes on. And when it cools down, click, and it's off. So I'd love to do a video on that in the future, actually. Um, it's probably something that you'll see here sometime this summer. All right, gentlemen, ladies, if, if, if I imagine the most of the folks here are guys, though. Tooney, last chance. You want these Minovation hinges? Mark one only. Mm -hmm. Lee Muller says, do you know how to add rear seat belts? Yeah, um, I mean, it's really not that difficult you just drill some holes in the uh, in the seat and then mount them up um, the thing about the mini is that all of the parts in the back so if, if they're just lap belts you can really just drill the holes in the, the actual seat pan um, take care to uh, to plug those and to paint those because um, depending on where you drill in that it will actually go out to the outside of the car um, but uh, as far as like a cross point um, cross this way uh, three-point seat belt those uh, if your car didn't come with them it probably doesn't have the reinforcement plates up on the pillars and so you end up you need to really fabricate those and uh, even still the mini is not a strong body um, so when you drill into some of those places it's really just sheet metal um, so I would recommend one reinforcement plates uh, I would definitely lean more towards lap belts um, they're easier to put in not as safe but easier to put in um, I don't have seat belts in the rear of my car uh, do you have people in the back of your mini a lot um, for me it's just it's too tight ah kids that's a good point that, that's one of those ones that's worth uh, worth adding some safety for. Um, you, I probably do lap belts, I guess. I don't know. That's a really tough one. Zach Peterson says about the electric fan, total game changer. Uh, it gets to the high 90s, low 100s. That's Fahrenheit for you, uh, for you overseas folks. Um, the sum, uh, in the summer and stop and go traffic gets brutal. Um, his is a J-Spec Mini with the fender fan, but it only can do so much. Oh, man. What do you guys think I should have for lunch today? It's almost lunchtime. Kind of leaning towards barbecue now that, uh, now that that was recommended. Sounds really good. Although I don't know if I'm gonna drive all the way up to the other side of the city for for a barbecue today. So, to recap, you guys said K series head, uh, motorbike head onto a uh, presumably a 1275 plus block, um, and uh, would be cool to supercharge or turbocharge that. I agree with that. Probably 
be quite a build. Um, and then that was that was pretty much it as far as uh, as far as things go. Not going to be installing the HIF44 on my car. Um, that's right back here. That is for sale if you want that on my eBay. <clears throat> um, going to be doing an HS6. And then, yeah. Mini Tom says sausages, mashed potato, and Yorkshire pudding with gravy. You will not regret it. That's a, th I don't know where I can find that here, um, but, uh, and I'm sure it wouldn't be as good as actually being in Yorkshire. Uh, Alexander Nelson says recommendations on troubleshooting the horn not working anymore. Connections to new horn are good. I think it's an issue in the steering column. Yeah, so um, the horn push inside the steering column, um, the outside of the inner part, so when you t take the cap off, the inside of that part there is generally your ground. Um, and so if that's corroded, it's not gonna, it's not gonna ground properly. The wire might just be disconnected or loose in there, so you have you should have one wire coming in, plugging into the horn button, and then the outside ring is your ground. So there's really only so much that can go wrong there. Um, what you can do is unplug the plug that's on the actual horn press, take that off, put the put the switch itself away, the actual horn push, and then t take your uh, lead and touch it to the side of. Um, the steering wheel boss and uh, see if your horn comes on. If it comes on, then you know it's in the switch um, or just not grounded properly. If, uh, if it doesn't come on, then you know that maybe that's not getting power and you can follow that wire. Paul says, you will need a straight cut gearbox. Yeah, I think that if I was doing a turbocharged K-series build, I don't think that uh, the standard helical gears could handle that. That would probably just explode. Mini Tom says, make it. Potatoes, butter, flour, and eggs is all you need, my friend. I should start cooking at home a little bit more. Alexander Nielsen says, I have the push horn on the lever in the steering column. Okay, so that's a little different then. Um, it still should be only one wire um, going into that, I think. I'm not as familiar with those switches, actually. I probably can't give you really good advice on this one. Christian says, I have a super cool radiator and find that it actually overcools my Tall 75. Need to add uh, need to add the electric fan. Oh, I see. So you would add an electric fan and remove the, the mechanical fan. Eric Tell says, good evening. Alternatively, whatever time it may be where all of you live. Thank you. Good to see you. It's, uh, it's still morning here. Um, Mark Price says, it's nice to hear someone who, who knows what they're talking about. Cheers, mate. I know sometimes. I'm not a genius. I do make mistakes, but I appreciate you saying that. Um, I uh, woke up to a few nasty comments this morning, unfortunately. Um, vale Beaver Creek Real Estate says, any recommendations for adding rear seat belts? I've got a couple kids. Um, Dinon says, just try to fit the air temp sensor on the air filter. Um, but no joy, uh, or can I just tie it somewhere on the firewall? Um, I mean, you're not getting a perfect reading if you move it uh, away from its kind of standard place. Um, I, I can't remember, does it mount Does it mount to the air box, the old air box, or does it mount to the actual manifold? Because if you take it out of the manifold, um, you're going to have a vacuum leak where it was plugged in. Um, so air, unfiltered air will be able to get into your intake, which you do not want. Minisaurus says, Alex, use a Mark III column. There you go. Dino says it's on the air box. Okay, that's good. Um, so yeah, you probably could just tie it like to the back there where the air intake is. That'd give it a relatively good reading in terms of the air, air temperature. Um, you really just want it as close to the intake where the air is actually passing over it as you can, um, you know, in terms of, you know, usability. You could try drilling a hole in, did I say this already? I can't remember. Drilling a hole in the plate for the, uh, for the actual air filter and mounting it in some way. Um, that might work. <laughs> Alex Toon says, put MK3 lights on your Mini. Listen, Alex, since I have you here. 
are you going to take these or not? Because if you're not, I'm sure I can find the, I'm sure I can do a little giveaway. I'm sure some people would love to, uh, lo love to have a vertical hinge lift. Um, otherwise, otherwise these should, these would look good on your gray van. Just saying. All right, folks, you heard it from Alex. He's going to take them. Uh, there you go. Oh, I have something exciting. Um, coming up very soon, the interior of my car. Uh, if any of you guys have any guesses, I might tell you if you guess right. <laughs> Alex Toon says, we'll give you some Mark III lights and an HS7-1 carb. Thank you. Thank you for that, Alex. Alright folks, well, ended up going a little bit over what I thought I was, but that's okay. I liked hanging out with you guys. Um, I, uh, I, I guess I'm going to wrap this up. For those of you who donated through the Super Chat, thank you so, so much. Um, literally every little bit that you guys donate helps me make these videos. Um, it does get very expensive, um, and uh, especially these engine builds. They're my favorite thing to do for you guys. I'd love to do something really crazy and like off the wall. Um, so if you guys want to see something like that, um, super chat donations help. Um, the biggest way though is Patreon. Um, that's my ongoing donation basis, uh, system. That's patreon.com slash classic mini DIY. Um, I don't really like asking about this stuff, but, um, it does really help me. Even dollar a month gets you access to a special chat, gets you free stuff if uh, you do some of the upper tiers. So, um, but uh but yeah if you're interested helps me so much again patreon.com slash classic mini diy um but i guess until the next episode um have a wonderful weekend and uh enjoy those minis motor on <laughs>